Hey everyone, welcome to the Oasis Podcast. I'm your host, Miss AJ. Thanks for tuning in. An oasis is something that provides refuge, relief, or a pleasant contrast. And that is exactly what you will find tuning into the Oasis Podcast. This is a space where I and special guests will be cultivating intentional and honest conversations about life's journey. Subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts and watch us on YouTube now. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Oasis Podcast. Thank you for joining me again on another episode of Things I've Learned to Be True. This episode is talking about reasons, seasons, and lifetimes. So those who know me know I love a good inspirational quote. I love inspirational books. And I've had this book for years. It is probably, to, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's called Acts of Faith by Iyana Vincent. And these are daily meditations for people of color. And I recently came across this passage and it just sparked so many thoughts in my head and made me look at things that's been happening and has happened in my life in a different way. Every time I read it, it always resonates. It always hits and it always makes me look at things very differently. So I'm going to actually start this things I've learned to be true, reading this passage and then kind of get into what I've learned to be true. For this passage, it reads, a reason. When someone is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you have expressed outwardly or inwardly. They have come to assist you through a difficulty to provide you with guidance and support, to aid you physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They may seem like a godsend, and they are. They are there for the reason you need them to be. Then, without any wrongdoing, on your part, or at an inconvenient time, this person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die, sometimes they walk away, Sometimes they act up or out and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met. Our desire fulfilled. Their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered and it is now time to move on. Next. Y'all. That ain't hit. So I've read this the other day. And it made me think about another episode I'm actually going to do a little more thoroughly. But it made me think about the different people and situations that happen in our lives. And what I've learned to be true, which is a lesson that I keep learning, is that everything happens for a reason, right? And for me, this lesson was relearned in my relationships and in particular a female relationship so you know I love a story time people and situations at least for me in my life and I'm sure in others if you really sit back and think about it happen in these ways right they happen either for a reason they happen for a season or they happen for a lifetime and the connection corner is actually going to talk a little bit more about each of these but for this particular episode, I'm going to focus on reason. And so I probably haven't mentioned it much, but those that, you know, are close to me, I've mentioned that, you know, at times I have difficulties with keeping friendships, like female relationships, especially. And I have them. Shout out to my booze. Y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> but when it comes to like female best friendships, something or another usually happens. So early 2021, I lost uh, another female friendship that for me, I thought was budding into something that could have been, you know, something, you know what I mean? And so many things went into it and I'm not going to go into all the details because they involve, you know, a few people that I care about and I'm not going to, you know, put them out there like that. But that shit hurt. (laughs) And... (laughs) And I was, it was so unexpected for me. And quite honestly, for me, I hate when friendships go awry because I invest in my friendships like I invest in my relationships. Shit. I think I invest in my friendships sometimes more than I've invested in my relationships in the past, honestly. 
And so when I consider some of my friends, you're not my acquaintance. You're not just somebody I know. You're my friend. You've been in my house. You feel me? I've probably been at yours. Like, I'll do things for you that I wouldn't do for just any old body. You know, I mean, I have a caring heart, but it ain't that caring. And so there's certain things that I'll do. I'll, you know, travel with you. I'll do things with you, you know? So this particular friendship started budding more so last year. So when the relationship ended, I was hurt. I was confused. Because I felt, in my opinion, I felt I did everything right. You know what I mean? Like, I felt I did everything right and it still had a negative outcome. So I was upset. I went from feeling hurt and confused to like, I'm mad. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck happened here? And, of course, my therapist had to help me <laughs> figure out. It, it. One, it really probably had nothing to do with you. But also, to switch my perspective about it right and though you know she did give that suggestion it still took me a little while to kind of get there for myself because it didn't feel good like friendship breakups hurt just like other breakups if not sometimes more and that's another episode i'm gonna talk about look for that one but um and maybe i'll give it a little more detail then but it hurt and it took me a little while to actually change my perspective on it and really see that that friendship came, it literally came and went in such a way that it had to be for a reason. It had to be to teach me a lesson. And the fact of the matter is now I can look at it and view it and be like, thank you. Like, Thank you for what you provided for me. Like, I am grateful. Because the reality of the situation is, when I started the friendship, my life was in a different place. Ending the friendship, life is in a better place. And some of the reasons is because of that friendship. And I have to not only accept that, but I send gratitude to her. You know who you are for that. And it took me a little while to get there. I'm not gonna lie, it took me, I, I did a lot of ups and downs with feelings of so much feelings. This is such a range of feelings. But I am now at a space of being grateful, right? I had to really change my perspective on that. And of course, we're having conversations with, you know, my friends and my therapist definitely helped with that. But it took a lot more time of sitting down with myself because. You know, at times when things happen, you want to be mad at a person. You want to stay mad. And of course, they did something to make you mad, right? But I also, when I was in that space, I would think about other things that have come from that lost relationship. That came during the relationship. That came because of that person. I'm like, how are you going to be mad? You know what I mean? Like, look. Look at what you got. You know, look at what happened. Look what you experienced. And it didn't make sense to stay mad at that person at the end of the day, Right? they actually enriched my life in a way. So again, thank you. Thank you. So give a little backstory. This relationship started budding literally at the heart of the pandemic. So I live alone, you know, at the time definitely lived alone, still living alone, not really thinking about the impact or how long this pandemic was going to last. And you know, I was also in therapy in a space of working some shit out, being vulnerable. So I was open to the new friendship, even though part of me was a little skeptical because, you know, I've had a lot of failed friendships. Not a lot. I've had two main failed friendships, long-term friendships in the past. And I was kind of like, mm, you yeah, know, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, no. I got my girlfriends already. I don't know if I want to invest in more or in another one. But I said, fuck it. You know, Boz was cool. Why not? I'm grateful for it because one, pandemic hit harder than I think a lot of us thought. Me living alone at the time, super single, newly single. So going through the breakup, going through, I think as we all were evaluating life and thinking about life and sorting a lot of shit out i eventually got it to a point where i was like shit like i think i might be getting a little lonely in this bitch <laughs> like, 
And I love my space. Anybody who knows that, I love my space. I love living alone. So to get to a point of feeling lonely, like, oh, fuck, like, what is going on? And it wasn't even so much like I was super conscious of it, but I realized as we started talking more, I was like, oh, shit, like, that's what I was feeling when it was happening and not, not me really realizing and being able to identify it. So I'm grateful that it budded when it did. I think it's definitely helpful for both of us because I think we were both in the space where we needed someone to connect to on that level. Our personalities vibed. So, you know, it wasn't hard to, to connect in that way. So I feel that she really helped me on many things, you know, and I think that was her purpose. She helped me on many things. For one, I was able to, in a friendship, let me rephrase that. I think I've definitely learned that over the years, but in this type of friendship, I was able to really just say my feelings. Like something happened that I didn't like, I was able to say it. Something happened that I did like, I was able to say it. I expressed myself, I said I love yous. I, you know, it's like, it just was free flowing. I, I didn't have a need to try to control the situation. I didn't have a need to, e or even hide myself in a certain way. So I was grateful for that. And it helped me manage other things that was going on in my life. And of course I had this person we could pick up the phone and kiki, which was something I hadn't done in a long time. Like I'm not a person who talks on the phone like that. So it wasn't something that I did often. I wasn't definitely doing my homegirls. My homegirls would be more like a, we'll text each other, you good, cool. You need anything? No. We going out to drink? Yes. And that'll be that, right? In COVID, it couldn't really happen like that. But we were more in-person people. So this connected with this particular person where it's COVID times. Both her and I weren't really going outside like that. So pick up the phone. Hey girl, Kiki. And we'll be talking for hours. Being able to talk about shit, how we're feeling, what's going on. And so that gave me a level of connection that I really, really, really needed at that time. Another thing about that failed relationship that I had to, I failed friendship, friendships or relationships, but that I had to, in hindsight, go, yeah, that was a plus, was the fact that she helped me, in a way, step out of my comfort zones when it came to new friendships, like starting new things, right? Like, you know, the Drake song, No New Friends. <laughs> I was kind of uh, in that kind of mindset. I wanted new friends, but at the same time, I didn't want to make new friends. <laughs> I didn't go through that process of making new friends. So because she kind of spearheaded developing a relationship, it didn't make it super hard. So hanging out with her felt good, you know, you know, being able to, again, talk on the phone and stuff. She spearheaded these things. So it felt, I, it didn't feel like I was forcing anything. I didn't feel like I was like trying to make something happen that wasn't going to happen. So it took kind of an, essentially the edge off of that, you know, that something that would have been harder for me to navigate. Also, and I felt like my soul really needed that. I felt like my soul at that time needed that connection, that female connection. Like I had my male bestie, you know, I have other good guy friends that I talk to and I have my good girlfriends too, but I felt like my soul needed that type of friendship that she provided that was different from what my other friends were providing. She also helped me see how much I've grown since not only my last type of friendship like that, but just as a person in general. Right. So through our conversations and also seeing her healing process, because she was also healing. She was also going through shit. She was also sh shedding her layers and trying to find a woman that she wanted to become. It made me realize, oh, shit, hearing certain things that she would say or certain situations made me and then how I respond to her and to them. It's like, oh, shit, I really, wow, I have grown. Look at how I thought about that, right? Look at how I broke that down. Look at how I had her, you know, think about it in a different space as opposed to being like, girl, fuck like, day, uh, uh I was just like, mm -hmm. oh. Think about it like this. View it like that, you know what I'm saying? But in a very loving way, not in like a cold-hearted kind of way. And, you know, I'm a Leo. <laughs> I tend to be cut straight to the point, girl, this is what it is when it ain't, but being just a lot more loving, essentially be a lot more compassionate and so I was like well I did definitely grow in a lot of ways and I just was able to just give I think a perspective that came from a place of healing and healed 
as opposed to a space of my trauma and hurt. That really helped me see how much I've grown. And I think I needed that, in a sense, that evaluation, if that made sense. Like me being able to evaluate myself and my growth as I was going through therapy, right? As I was going through a pandemic, right? As I was going through loneliness, that I was able to say, oh girl, you're still growing out here. Like you have grown. Cause you know, sometimes, especially for me, it's hard to see my progress. And so that helps me along the way, see my progress. And another thing that I learned was, bitch, you can't make friends. <laughs> like, you can and you have made a new friend without it being as painful as you thought it might be, right? Without being so fearful of it. Again, I had my apprehension, but again, I think that had to do with my trauma of my previous, you know, dynamics. But with that trauma, with that fear, I still did it. And I still went, you know, balls deep, as they would say, meaning I did it with my whole self and my whole heart, you know, as opposed to going, Ugh, you know, how girls, uh, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, no, like, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it with my whole ass instead of half ass. Right. And I did it and I was able to do it. So I had to, you know, I had to, in hindsight, I gave myself kudos for that that it was something I could do and I did do it. And again, another reason that I think this happened was I now am, I am, even though it didn't go how, of course, I wanted it to go, I now know it's something that I could absolutely do. I'm capable of doing and doing it in the way that I wanted to do it, in a way that I really, really intended to do it. And I know I could do that moving forward. And lastly, one of the biggest reasons is the fact that she introduced me to my boo. Legitly. Like, without her, if it wasn't for her, I would not have my current man right now. And it just, just how it all happens had to be divine. And if for nothing else, I would be forever and eternally grateful for her. Simply for that one reason, even though there were so many other reasons that she helped me grow and... I see what her reason was to be in my life at the time that it was. I would never have met him, ever. And if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have dated him, <laughs> like, even after I met him, because she encouraged me to date him. She encouraged me to, after our first date, when I was like, oh, girl, oh, no. She was like, girl, give him a chance. Go on the second date, girl. See what happens. And it was after going on that second date. I was like, all right, all right. I'll keep talking to you. <laughs> and now look at us. You know what I mean? Like, we're so far into our relationship. And honestly and truly, probably one of the best ones I've ever had thus far in my life. So, all for a reason. Like, all for a reason. So, I say all this to say is at times, it seems things don't make sense. Like, well, why would this person come and then this, I gave this and this happened and they said this to me and it's all part of the plan. It's all part of what is supposed to happen and how it's supposed to happen. And when God puts someone in your life, it's for a reason. And baby, when he takes them out, it's for a reason. And it's not to dwell so much on the little details, but to focus on the bigger picture. Focus on not so much on the negatives. Because sometimes, you know, these things don't end negatively. Sometimes it just end, right? But if it did neg end on a negative note, being able to, of course, feel your feelings and then process them and then let them go. But then seeing the bigger picture. What did I need? What was I praying for? What did I want? that this person provided because they probably did no matter how shitty that person was no matter honestly you know if they were shitty or maybe not as perfect but i'm sure there was something there that kept them in your life at the time that they were what was that what were you yearning for you know maybe consciously or subconsciously and that person brought to you for the period of time that they were there and when you dig a little deeper you realize that everything serves a purpose and they could be for a particular reason it could be for a season or it could be for a lifetime
for today's Connection Corner. I read you a quote from Iyana's Acts of Faith, Daily Meditations for People of Color. This quote is by Michelle Ventor. It reads, people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you figure out which it is, you know exactly what to do. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts and YouTube. Rate us and leave us a review and comment on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and YouTube. Share your favorite episode and like us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions, comments, want to be a guest, or any show ideas, contact us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. That's A-A-Y-J-A-Y-S-O-A-S-I-S at gmail.com. Or direct message us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts and YouTube. Rate us and leave us a review and comment on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and YouTube. Share your favorite episode and like us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions, comments, want to be a guest, or any show ideas, contact us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. That's A-A-Y-J-A-Y-S-O-A-S-I-S at gmail.com. Or direct message us on Instagram and Facebook.